So you've got a new camera, you do a little bit of filming, you import it into your computer, into your editing software, and then notice it is terrible at playback, almost unusable. What do you do? So one of the reasons why it could be terrible at playback is because it is recorded in H.265. H.265 is a fairly new codec that is found in many new mirrorless cameras. H.265 can also be known as another codec name called HEVC, which stands for High Efficient Video Codec. So the reasoning behind this codec is actually really, really good. It's designed in a way to be able to let you obtain the highest quality data so the highest bit rate, and then storing it in a volume that is a lot smaller than what you see in H.264. Now, the downside to that is that while it is very good at its storage solutions and its efficiency, it is very, very bad at video playback. And that is due to the fact that our CPUs are not at a point yet that can deal with the added strain and stress of unpacking H.265. But there is a solution to this. There is a way that we can use the highest quality codec, which is H.265, and transcode it in a way that can be played back, read, and edited very, very simply. People say, why use H.265? Why not just use H.264? On some cameras like the Fujifilm X-T3, allows you to get into the 10-bit color depth range. You can't do that without H.265. So unfortunately, this is the only way we can go about it. So there are many ways of transcoding footage. You can transcode in Final Cut Pro using compressor. You can transcode in DaVinci Resolve, or you can transcode in Media Encoder, which is the one I use. So the reason why I use Media Encoder is that it's very straightforward to use and does the job very well. So let's head on over to Media Encoder. I'll give you guys a sample of H.265 footage in Premiere Pro and see what it does. Not very impressive. And then we'll transcode it and we will re-import it into Premiere Pro and then I can show you what it looks like completed. Here we are in Premiere Pro and here's a H.265 file that hasn't been transcoded and imported directly to Premiere Pro. And what we're going to do is on full resolution, we are going to play it back to see how it acts. As you can see, there's a bit of an initial delay, and then we are straight away just getting stutter. There's nothing we can do about it. You can't edit like this, no chance. So even if we go down and just to demonstrate at a quarter resolution on playback, if we hit play again, it is still exactly the same. We're still getting stutter and it's unusable. So what we have to do is, we have to go over now to Adobe Media Encoder, which is a part of the Creative Suite, and we have to import our H.265 file, just drag it straight in. So what happens after we have initially imported it straight in, you can see our file over here, that's our file name. Now, if you have multiple files, you just drag them all in and just drop them straight in and it will handle it. What you need to do is you need to go down to Broadcast, you need to go down to, you need to go down to broadcast. You need to go down to Apple ProRes. It will open up this drop down menu with all these different Apple ProRes codecs. So the issue is you have to determine which one is right for you to use. So how do we do that? So what we do is we head on over to a little thing called a Apple ProRes white paper. This can be downloaded below in the description. I've linked it for you guys. So what we do here is we go all the way down and we go to this graph down the bottom, which is down here. So what we know is, is that we have filmed at 4K. So we are in this section right here. We have filmed at 24 frames, so we are here. And we have filmed at a bit rate of 200 megabits. So what we need to do is we need to find a codec that is suitable to that bit rate, that frame rate, and that resolution. So how do we do that? So we look here at 24 frames, we have filmed at 4K, 24 frames, and we filmed at a bit rate of 200 megabits. Now, if you have a look here at ProRes 422 Proxy, its maximum limit is 155 megabits. If you have a look at ProRes 422 LT, its maximum is 350. So I'm happy to use ProRes 422 Proxy, that's the one I usually use and I find it works well. Yes, you do lose 50 megabits, but it's not a massive amount. So we will select ProRes 422 Proxy for our transcoded footage. 
<clears throat> so over here, we select 422 proxy, we drag it onto our first clip, and there we go. So now all we need to do is we hit play, and that will start the transcoding process. Now what will happen when it's done is it will be saved in the location of the original file. So in this case, it's on my desktop. So another thing, going back to the white paper while that is transcoding, you can see that if we go up to ProRes 422, say, you have a maximum of 503 megabits at 24 frames at 4K. So 503 is perfect if I'm shooting at the maximum bit rate on X-T3, which is 400 megabits. 500 megabits is perfect, so therefore I'll be using ProRes 422. So if we come back to media encoder, we can see the process of it at the moment, and we can see that it is almost completed. And once that is completed, we are then free to use our transcoded footage, which should play a fair bit better. So it has been completed and that is visible by the little green tick. And when you have multiple clips, it may take an hour, it may take two hours, it may take three hours, depending on how many clips you have. My process is usually importing everything as soon as I get back from a shoot, transcoding it and just leaving it. So then when it comes time to edit, it is all done and it's ready to go. So now, so if we look on our desktop, we have to look for a file that is a .mxf file, which is this one here. Now we can open up Premiere Pro again. We can delete the old H.265 footage and we are able to then drop that straight into the timeline like that. And now it should play back perfectly fine, which it does. And that is on a quarter resolution. So let's check out playback on full resolution. And there you go. There is no stuttering. It is working perfectly fine. No issues. Even on scrubbing, it is fine. I couldn't even do that on a quarter resolution before. So we are not dropping any frames and it works perfectly fine. So as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward process. Just remember, always reference the white card so you get the maximum bit rate out of your footage. And always remember when you get home, back up your footage, import it into your computer, transcode it straight away, let it sit there for an hour or two, let it do its job so when it is done, you are ready to edit. Thanks guys for watching. If you guys have any questions, please leave them below in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And please stick around. There's plenty more content to come. See you guys in the next one.